So, you want to start painting on denim jackets, but you have no idea where to start. And I'm talking paints, paintbrushes, your overall basic setup. Don't worry, I've got you. Hi, my name is Lilith. I am the creator and designer behind Australian fashion art label Ziggenthaler, which is currently based in Switzerland, Europe. And today I'm going to be going through the beginner setup you need if you want to start painting your own denim jackets. I'm going to roll the intro and then we're going to get straight into it. I decided to do this video today because it is a very common question in my DMs or in the comments of my YouTube videos. And just as a prerequisite, I do actually have a video, five things you should know before you paint on your denim jacket. And a lot of the things and items that I go through today uh, are an extension of that video. I'm going to be talking about why you need these items. If you want sort of more background info, I definitely would recommend you to look at that video first because it goes into a whole lot of information that you may not know and is definitely a better video to start on and then you can come here and figure out what you can buy to have your own little setup. Got that out of the way, cool, let's start. The first thing you will be needing for your basic beginner setup is fabric paint. Go watch this video if you haven't because I go into detail about why you should be using fabric paint instead of normal acrylic paint. I'm not going to go into that now, so please go and watch that video first. You need fabric paint. This is basically one of the staples of doing this craft. But I get asked a lot what type of fabric paint do I use or what fabric paint should you use? Now this all depends on what country you are in and also what sort of budget you have. I've only ever used Seda Color Opaque. It is a paint that comes from France and was the most readily available paint to me in Australia. And the paint is relatively well priced so this was always the paint that I've used. But when I talk to people around the world I know that some people are in America and can't necessarily get these paints or it's easier to source other paints. The same for if you live in other countries like India or in Europe, you might actually find that there are paints that are a little bit more easier for you to get and a more affordable price. So it really all depends on what you can get in your country. I've heard there is Artusa fabric paint, which I believe you can get in America. There is Jacquard or Jacquard fabric paint, which is also American based. Um, you've also got Angelus or Angelus. They also have a line of paints, which is really good for leather. If you want to go into painting on leather jackets, lower tier sort of more affordable paint is tulip paints. And then of course you've got the set of color opaque, which comes from France. And depending on whether you can get that in your country, it's what I use the most. However, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best. Um, another question I get asked a lot about fabric paints is uh, whether I recommend you buy fabric markers, which is basically like a fabric paint but it's in the context of a marker, as the name would suggest. <laughs> I've used one type of fabric marker and that was Set -a Color fabric marker, so it's by the same brand that does the Set -a Color opaque range. I think that there are lots of advantages to getting markers. One of them is that they can be much more easier and more time efficient to apply. And especially if you are a beginner and less confident with paintbrushes. The only disadvantage I would find with markers is that they tend to dry out faster than if you buy just a paint pot of fabric paints. I had this with the marker that I used. I used it for a hoodie and it was very good because it was very easy to paint a lot of these intricate details I was painting at the time. So it was very time efficient it was much more faster than having to apply paint to a paintbrush but I found that after a while the marker actually dried out really really fast it was a little bit old in general the integrity of the paint in a marker really does rely on the fact that the marker needs to be wet and it can't dry out so I tend to buy paint pots just because I store a lot of paints and I use a lot of paints and I don't use them all 
you know, in one time. So I've got a big collection that I might have over the space of two years. And some markers that I've bought have dried out, which is very annoying. So yes, you can buy markers if you don't feel confident enough with paint brushes and fabric paint. Mind you, that's what practice is for. Otherwise, I would more so recommend you buy fabric paint in a pot. So another question I've been asked is when you do buy fabric paints, what colors should you buy? What's a reasonable amount of paints to buy if you're just trying out this craft? So what I would say is definitely, definitely you need to buy a black paint and a white paint. These are the staples, especially white paint can be used as a background layer to really help other colors pop if you're painting on a very dark fabric. As for other colors, you don't necessarily need to go out and buy a whole range of colors. When I first started out, I think I just bought the primary colors. So I bought blue, yellow, red, and I think I bought a metallic just to play around with. Buying this amount of colors is not going to limit you in any aspect. You know, you can mix or you can, you know, start off with something simple like a pop art piece. If you're not too sure about starting out, you know, whether you're going to enjoy this or not, you can even just buy black or white. You can paint so many different designs just with one color. But if you do want to paint colors, I would recommend just going with your primary, red, yellow, and blue. If you really enjoy painting with these and want some more colors, that's when I would say you should invest more money into other colors. Depending on the range of colors you have with your fabric paint, which is also another factor in buying different fabric paints. I know that Set Color Opaque does have a really good range of colors, both in opaque and shimmer, which is why I really like this fabric paint but you can also get a whole range of colors in lots of other different fabric paint brands so it's just all about exploring seeing what you can get in your country and basically how much money you're willing to spend because yeah fabric paints can be quite pricey uh, I'm very aware of that so yeah that is what I would recommend in regards to fabric paints let's move on to the second one But the second thing you'll be needing for your beginner setup, either fabric chalk, fabric pencils, or a fabric marker. Going back to my five things you need to know before you paint your denim jacket video, I go into detail about why it is very important to have this type of product. And today I'm going to be talking to you about sort of what you can buy, what's available, and how you can sort of source this. So uh, fabric chalk, fabric pencil, or fabric markers, um, they are specifically made to create markings on fabric that will generally go away after a certain amount of time, whether that be with water, ironing, or there are also fabric pens that disappear within like 12 hours. You're basically going to want a product like this because it's going to help you Map out your design before you paint it on your denim jacket. These sort of products are needed in basic sewing projects and tailoring so you could just go to your local craft store which is what I did and you will most likely find one of these products whether it's fabric chalk, fabric pencil or fabric pens. I have no brands I can tell you. I just went into my local sewing store and bought like a generic brand. It doesn't need to be anything fancy you just need to make sure that it is made for fabric and that the marking can disappear at some point. Now, one thing I have been asked before is if you are on a budget, can you use normal chalk or pencils? And to be honest, I have used normal chalk and pencils before on my fabric, but this is where I will tell you no. <laughs> you need to buy chalk or pencils specific to fabric. And I did a little research on this and I found out that these products such as fabric chalk can be made from clay and wax, which sort of helps the markings to disappear and I also feel that a lot of craft chalks and pencils actually have the potential to stain fabrics so I would really really recommend you find a chalk or pencil or marker specific to fabric because you don't want to be staining your fabrics at all so yes a good fabric chalk pencil or marker and this is going to help you map out your design before you actually paint on the jacket number three The third thing you will be needing is paintbrushes. You might think this is a very obvious thing, but I just have a couple of things that I think that you should know. One, fabric paint is really stubborn. So when you do buy a set of paintbrushes for fabric paint, I would recommend that you buy some specifically for your fabric painting.
do not recommend you to use, you know, your special paint brushes that you use for watercolors or for oils because you don't want that cross contamination with paints especially fabric paint. The nature of fabric paint is to be quite stubborn and it will adhere to any sort of fiber that it comes in contact with. And paintbrush bristles, whether they're synthetic or natural, they're sort of like a fibery texture. The fabric paint will sort of adhere to it and get stuck to it very easily. This doesn't mean that you won't be able to wash them out. It just means that if you shouldn't really be using these paintbrushes for anything else. So if you do have paintbrushes already, I would recommend you to buy new ones specifically for fabric paint, just so you don't cross contaminate with any other paints. And another question I get asked a lot about paintbrushes is what type of paintbrushes would I recommend? And honestly, I'm not one to go out and buy expensive paintbrushes. I find that when I do paint with fabric paint, it can disintegrate the paintbrush over a long period of time. So I don't actually go out and buy expensive paintbrushes. I usually buy like very affordable run-of-the-mill paintbrushes. I usually buy like a whole packet which has a whole different variety of sizes which is something that you will need because when you think about you know if you're wanting to paint a big area of white before you actually paint your main design. You want a big paintbrush that's going to aid you in painting that big space. But you also want smaller paintbrushes for the tinier little details that are going to bring your design to life. Don't buy the most expensive, just buy what is ever affordable to you and make sure you buy it in lots of different sizes to utilize your painting and design work. The next thing you'll be needing is protective gear and layering. Now what do I mean by that? So wherever you decide to set up for your painting, you will 100% need to make sure that you are protecting and covering the surfaces that you're painting on. Now I don't necessarily mean for harder surfaces because fabric paint, at least set a color opaque, when you do spill it on a surface. You know, hard surfaces are easy because the paint will just pick right off, but I'm talking about things like fabrics. I can assure you, I have spilled so much fabric paint on carpets, on pillows, on blankets, on any sort of fabric in the vicinity of my workspace. I can tell you now, fabric paint does not need to be heat fused for it to not come off. I have a crazy amount of stains on clothes that I wore at the time or clothes that I wore just to touch a little bit up and I've ruined some of my best clothes. And I found myself in so many situations where a whole paint of purple just ended up on the carpet and that was not good. Or I accidentally spilt some red paint and it dribbled all the way down a white wall that was not good. Fabric paint is very stubborn. The nature of fabric paint is to adhere to fibers such as fabric. So I would really, really recommend make sure you have protective layering on yourself, on your clothes and around the area that you're going to be painting in. You're welcome. The next and final thing that I think you will be needing for your basic setup is you will be needing your fabric swatch. So a fabric swatch is basically a scrap piece of fabric that you have that you can swatch your fabric paints on first so that you can sort of test out the colors and the integrity of the fabric paint before you actually start using it. I do this all the time. I did it when I first started using Set A Color Opaque um, and I did it when I first started using different colors, different shimmers. Sometimes I'd even swatch two colors on top of each other just to see if they would bleed out. And then what I did was I heat fused the fabric swatch and threw it in the washing machine just to make sure that it was wash proof. And so basically what your fabric swatch is going to do is it's going to be basically the experiment that's going to make you see sort of the threshold of integrity of the fabric paint because you need to be able to trust the products that you're using and this is how I usually do that. And yeah, this is basically a solution I have to a lot of people that ask me questions about different fabric paints or layering fabric paints or mixing different formulas. And what I will always say is experiment and like test swatch it first. What I try to do as well is I try to see actually how much it takes for the paint to come off of my swatch fabric. So I'll do things that you shouldn't do with your painted garments like put it in the dryer or put it on a really hot, really aggressive wash and see whether the paint sticks or not because when you start to understand your fabric paints more and trust them I feel like you have more trust in the finished result of your jacket and you won't be wasting all of this time 
painting something with paints that you think are gonna be all right, but then, you know, all of a sudden start flaking off or scratching off. So yes, make sure you have your own fabric swatch and use it to your heart's content. Make sure you experiment with your paints and use it as a guide to see how, how paints turn out on fabric, how rigid they are, how flexible they are. So yes, the fifth thing you'll be needing for your setup is a swatch. It is so important and make sure you use it as much as you can. So yeah, that is what I would recommend that you buy or have as your beginner setup. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you have fun starting out on your jacket painting journey. And I hope that my channel can inspire you to do all types of different designs. I do have lots of different tutorials, lots of other videos with tips and tricks and some videos explaining my own designs as well. So if you are looking for inspiration, definitely check out the rest of my channel. Otherwise, happy painting, stay inspired, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.